In this video, I've compiled 10 awesome budget decks for you to play with on Magic the Gathering Arena, most of them with zero rares. Deck lists and timestamps for your convenience down in the description. Let's get into it. The star of the show is our main win condition, Wing Mantle Chaplain, a 4-mana defender that makes a 1-1 bird for every defender you control, including itself, plus makes another bird every time you cast another defender. We're of course then jamming as many defenders as we can, Walking Bulwark, which can turn our defenders into attackers for only 2 mana. Coastal Bulwark, which lets us sift through our deck if we have extra mana. Coral Colony, which serves as an alternate win condition. Academy Wall, that lets us filter through our deck whenever we cast Incense and Sorceries, of which there are many. And finally, Shield Wall Sentinel, that lets us tutor up our Wing Mantle Chaplains. We're also playing spells to control the board before we kill our opponents with birds. Four copies of Lay Down Arms and Ossification, and three Protect the Negotiators to counter key threats. We're also playing four Meeting of Minds to refill our hand, and many times we can cast this for free with Convoke, using our defenders or bird tokens. And lastly are two rares, two copies of the Eternal Wanderer. This serves a ton of roles in our deck. If we find ourselves behind, we can use it to wipe the board. It can flicker our own Wing Mantle Chaplain to generate tons of bird tokens, or just generate two two double strikers in an empty board. So that's the deck. Let's jump into the games. I actually think we keep this. So we have some early removal. We have an early blocker. So we're just gonna just use our mana and ossification on this. Really want to hit our third land here. Okay. So we'll get to play the bulwark. Counterspell? No? Okay. So this is good. We're getting this proliferate out of their hand with no counters on the board. Some kind of green, blue, toxic something here. Okay, there's the first counter. Rot Priest. I'm assuming they have a way to uh, protect this. So we let that resolve. Then we with the kicker, counter their Tyvar stand. Okay. So no threats yet, but we are at three counters. Alright, so... Just gonna go for it. This way they're using protection when we don't, like, really care about it. And we can't attack. But we can surveil and... Oh no, we can't afford both because you have to tap it. We won't have the mana for a counter spell anyway. So we have to use... The blue. Alright, so we take our two. And we'll draw. Hey, that was good. We got our ossification. Do we use it now? I think so. They might have another protection spell, but that's okay. No protection spell. Okay. Um, bulwark. And we're gonna pass this time so that we can meeting of minds on their end step. And hopefully we hit our payoff here. I can start to turn the corner. Okay, down to 16. Come on. Where's our payoff? Nothing yet. Oh, there he is. Okay. So... Okay, we're gonna go for this again. We need four mana available. So do we want to play Bulwark plus Chaplain? They have a counter spell. We want to get it out of their hand. So we just want to keep using removal here. Okay. I think we're going to wait one turn. Try to punish them passing. I'm assuming that they have something here, but we want to get whatever they have interaction wise out of their hand if we can. Serum Snare. Here. Okay. 
Okay. So we will block. I will block the Contaminator. I guess they have Tyvar Stand. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Flying and Toxic 1. Sure. Alright, so they get to Proliferate. This is getting scary. Okay, so they know we have this, though. So we're going to Surveil. Uh, we're going to put that in the graveyard. We don't need that. Again, we want to get counter spells out of their hand in case they have them. No. Okay. All right. So we're going to turn the corner here a little bit, hopefully. We have some blockers. They can't use the ascent. Oh, nice. Okay. Now we're going to start bashing. Uh, we'll just target itself, I guess. Here we go. Wing Mantle Chaplain. Let's go! Nice. That was a close one. We'll keep this. Start on blue. Opponent on Elvish Archivist. So when they play enchantments, they draw a card. I think we have a block for one turn. So I'm going to play this. Because even if they play an artifact... Yep, we do, in fact, have a block. So now... Do we pass with Negotiators up or play an Academy Wall? Hmm. They might just play another two-toughness creature. So I think we're just going to pass. We have good blocks. Yeah, see, they play... If we kept up Negotiators there, we would have been in some trouble. Alright, so they only get counters once on the Archivist. I think now is the time to use ossification on it. And we'll play another coral colony. And then next turn we can play the wing mantle chaplain. We have blocks. Wow, three patchwork automaton. So that is definitely their best payoff that they happen to have in their hand at the beginning of the game here. Um, I'll double block this one. And we'll block here. I think that's a good block for us. This is fine. So we're going to play this. Colony. Pass with Negotiators up. Um, we can Surveil if they don't play a spell, but I think that's unlikely. Alright, so we get to counter their thing. So they would have to pay three. Which they cannot afford. And we'll take the action... Excellent. Discard a land. We don't have a block on the automaton. Okay, so they are out of gas. Um, hmm. What do we do here? We just block the automaton. We want them to put their counters somewhere. No, I don't think so. We can't block this. We take seven. We can start chump blocking, though. Alright, so here comes Chaplin. Can start chump blocking them or milling them out. Start milling them at four cards a turn. Okay. Can't be blocked. Let's go ahead and block here. Do we double block? Three, four. Yes, I think so. Do we, like, triple like this? Because then they could trade with the colony and a bird. That feels pretty good. And then we have to chump block one of these. Yeah, that feels right to me. Let's surveil. They're probably going to kill us before it matters. Um, hmm. That's tough. We'll keep that on top. We can essentially cast it for free. And then we pass. So we really got to draw some uh, some action here. Okay, can't be blocked. Okay, uh, chump block. Take one. 
Eternal Wanderer would be incredible right now. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to decline because I don't know what I'm getting. Okay, and then we'll mill them. Mill them for three. Ooh, nice. Okay, so... So I'm going to choose choose a creature. No, you can have the apprentice. They do get to turn on Mishra's foundries, but they can't attack the wanderer. They have to attack us with them. Okay, Ozolith. 3-3. Three, three. So we're going to chump block. Because now we can start to refill. So we can go uh, exile. And then we can make a token. And pass the turn. Okay. Doesn't do anything. Nice. Hmm. This is slow, but I'm going to keep it. Our curve is really low. All right, there you go. There's a good draw. At least we won't get run over. What is with all these poison decks today? Okay, whatever. Um, hopefully we can just turbo out the chaplain. Okay, opponent missing lands. We like to see that. And we're just going to pass. We can meeting with mines, or meeting of mines, to draw two. Thanks to Convokes. Let's just go ahead and do this. Okay, proliferating. We're kind of racing. So, we're going to go for, I think, just the chaplain first. And we can start hitting them. Because we are probably on a clock. And the version we're playing against, they don't play creatures, so... A lot of our creatures are really bad. Okay. So, we're putting them in a desperate spot here, which is good. Um, we're going to hold this second one. So we're going to grab... Do we grab another Wing Mantle Chaplain? Probably just a Chaplain, in case they have counters. We want to keep the train going. So we're going to get another three, and we're going to put them on a nice clock here. Infectious Inquiry. Okay. Alright, so we just go Chaplain, right? Make another three birds. Tick tock. Can they give us six counters? Okay, we're just gonna sacrifice a bird. Alright, ooh, Bulwark's a nice draw. Okay, they're going to counter it. Okay. So we'll play another one. And they've got one turn. Let's see if they can do it. Braska's fall will sack Sentinel. Need our birds to finish the game here. Good game. Um, we'll, we can sacrifice one of them. Off you go. And we hit them for eight. Good game. Chaplin doing its thing. Our main reanimation target is the Dusk Mangler. Since we're not casting it a large majority of the time, the drawback can be ignored. But when it ETBs, our opponent has to sack a creature, discard a card, and loses for life. We also have Mirror Shell Crab that can counter something with its channel ability, then serve as a backup reanimation target if we don't have Dusk Mangler. Our early game is a blue-black control shell with cut down, infernal grasp, and go for the throat, and make disappear alongside the Mirror Shell Crab for counter spells. We're also playing Tainted Indulgence and Thirst for Discovery to keep our hand full of gas and get our Dusk Manglers in the graveyard. Finally, our eight reanimation spells, four Edgar's Awakening, which is very replaceable, and four Graveyard Shift, which is excellent. This deck easily gets to five mana values in the graveyard and can flash in a Dusk Mangler before blocks, which can be absolutely backbreaking, or just let us keep counter spells up, then reanimate on our opponent's end step if we want to. So that's the deck. Let's jump into the games.
I mean, we're going to keep it. We have some early interaction. We need to hit one land. But if we do, we have we can put Mangler in the graveyard with Thirst. Opponent Mulliganing. Okay, we'll start on our tap land. No luck yet. Hopefully just a target for cut down from our opponent. Passing. Okay, this is fine. So now we're passing on turn three. We can either Thirst for Discovery or ditch the Mirror Shell Crab. Which we'll see what they play. I think I'm going to let that go. I don't have any creatures on the board. They're not pressuring us yet. We'll just do this. We'll just discard both Dusk Manglers. They don't do anything in our hand. And then we'll play a land, pass the turn. We can make disappear, cut down, mirror shell crab, lots of options. And we just need to draw one of our reanimation spells, and we should be in business. Hopefully just tap out for like a Shieldred or something. Um, we'll just go for a mirror shell crab here. Next turn we'll have mirror shell crab and make disappear. We can counter two things in one turn. Really need one of our reanimation spells here. Because our opponent's going to stick something soon. Passing. Okay. I mean, we're not tapping out for anything, so they can't really play around the counters here. And we're hoping to draw into uh, Graveyard Shift as our best reanimation spell. Okay, so we have five plus a counter. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Why not? This is fine. We'll get them to discard. We have some interaction. If they stick a threat, we can't counter. We can always just use Go for the Throat. Or cut down instead. Not sure if they realize that this was being reanimated. Or they go to kill it. We'll probably just let that happen. Because we want to make sure we're keeping them off of their threats. If they just use like a go for the throat of their own. Terra Sunder is exiling. Um, that's fine. We have one more in the graveyard. So we're not sad about losing that one. Okay. That was clever. Okay, getting to put a counter on a creature. We're just going to go for the cut down here. I'm not sure what that last card is in their hand, but... This way our clock is nice and long. Just going to pass again. But Thirst for Discovery is a good draw here. Okay, so that's an easy counter. Can't let you have that. Okay. Go for thirst. Let's discard a land. And we'll just do this now. Why not? Um, hmm. I think we're going to pass again. Actually, let's play our land and we'll pass one more time. We can do everything on our opponent's turn. So again, we just don't want to get got by like a huge... Uh, Target not artifact creature. This is fine. Okay. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna destroy this. Let's draw some cards. We'll discard Mangler and the land. And then we'll go for the throat. Your shakedown heavy. We need to hit a re reanimation spell here. Okay, this is fine. We'll just hard cast it. Uh, we'll pay four. And we get that last card out of their hand. And we are in a good spot, hopefully, to take over this game. Hopefully they just whiff for a turn. Okay. So they don't get to casualty. They get to make a devil. It's a 2-2 and deals one damage. So, hmm. Let's just hit the ob. And it's fine. I think we're just going to run this thing out. We do take a risk of having shields down for a big spell from them, a Breach the Multiverse or an Atali. It's fine. Um, Your this. punishment is my entertainment. Okay, we can attack into those. 
Send it both at them. This way we can trade. And then we'll drop another one. Again, we just need them to whiff. Come on now. Okay. Sacking your own ob. Yeah, we're shields down right now. And Okay. So they get to exile them from my hand, graveyard, and library. Why they didn't go for Dusk Mangler, actually? Might have been better. Okay. Um, what's in here now? Dusk Mangler? Alright, so this should be game. I think Dusk Mangler was the better target. Alright. Hit with Dust Mangler and good game. Nice, that went pretty well. Yep, looks good. Tainted Indulgence. Hopefully we draw some removal. Okay, passing. Tainted Indulgence, we'll put Dusk Mangler in the graveyard. Play with fire to us. This is always the test of a budget deck, is mono red. Right, so we'll draw two. Discard our Dusk Mangler. Land past the turn. We have a Thirst. Hit Lightning Strike. Uh, we'll counter this. That is good enough. Good enough to counter for sure. Okay, and now we'll pass again. Yeah. We can thirst away the awakening. Which is probably the play here. Another burn spell. Okay, making some treasures. Okay, we'll just discard a land. And... Uh, we don't have any counters anyway, so let's just go ahead and return Dusk Mangler. Make them discard. Start to put some pressure on them. We have a good blocker. Okay, okay so Chandra. They're going to copy something, probably. Charming Scoundrel. Yeah, that totally works out, because we're going to just Edgar's Awakening, bring it back. Deals X damage to each of up to two targets. If we play the tap land... Yeah, we're not we're not double spelling anyway. So let's get that last card out of their hand. They sack, lose four life. That worked out pretty nicely. They get to... Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so the second one fizzles, though. Yes. Okay. No plan, no problem. Yep, pretty good, pretty good. Just do it again. <laughs> Lose four more life. We have make disappear now. They don't discard. Fight with your heart. Okay, so we resolve that one. And then we counter that one. Let them put a little more resources into killing this thing. Chandra is pretty busted. I guess that kind of makes sense. But they're spending a ton of resources to get our Dusk Mangler dead. Kind of works out because we're just gonna do it again. Yeah, we're just gonna do it this way. <laughs> do it one more time. They're probably sick of us now. And then we cast this last one, and we should get them. We get to go for tainted indulgence. We just get to draw two now. We don't have to discard. But we could just sacrifice our own. Dusk Mangler. They're not going to get us to four life, probably, right? 
Okay. So go to 12. Okay, this is fine. So I think we got them. So they're going to deal us 3 damage. We go to 9. Um, is there any reason to do this? Yeah, I mean, we can just discard something else, whatever we draw. Okay, and then we go land Dusk Mangler. Uh, we could just pay the four, I guess. All right, good game. Just cast Dusk Mangler five times, and that wins you the game, I guess. Yeah, great. Start on the tap land. Okay, mono red number two. Let's hope they don't curve on curve out on us too hard here. Right, Flame Stoker. Got another one drop. Okay, so we have to kill the Fusling. It's a 3 1. It's a little too strong. Can't let that thing hit us every turn. Wow. Okay, they're just coming in hard. Alright, Mono Red is doing its thing right now, doing seven. And this thing is still just it's just a two three though. So we need to hit removal for that. So I want to see more cards with the Thirst of Discovery. Take our two. They want to walk into a counter. Hopefully they tap out for something. Okay, this works. Discard the mirror shell crab. Get another tap land. Not not the removal spell we wanted to see. Um, let's see if they'll invest some resources into that. Okay. Okay, so this kind of worked out a little bit. They can do it at instant speed, though. Can't really get them. So, they 4-3... Yeah, we kind of have to do this, I think. So if they sack in response, we at least don't lose the two life. So they get to draw some cards. There wasn't really anything we could do about that. That was pretty nice for them. Another Flame Stoker. We'll, we'll counter this. And then we'll use Thirst. So we fill our hand. Um, let's discard Dusk Mangler and a land. And we'll pass. We have Mirror Shell Crab and Tainted Indulgence. Let's go Tainted Indulgence first. Maybe we draw a better counter here. Discarding this. We make them tap out for it, I think. They at least tapped out here. Okay, we go to th three. I, say, I hope they attack their battle. That would be nice. Okay. Hmm. I mean, if they just have, like, play with fire or something, we just die. So we're gonna go for it, some kind of monstrous rage or something. So, counter, unless they pay two. counter unless they pay three. We still die to like monstrous rage or something. There's a lot of things that kill us here. Okay. Surprised they sacked. I guess really wanted their mana. Okay, so I'm gonna bring back the Dusk Mangler now. Make them discard. Let's see if we can turn the corner here. It is unlikely. 
is we are at lightning strike range. But we will see. If we can just clog the board up, we might be able to get through this. Um, okay, so we'll draw now. Didn't have enough mana to cast that, unfortunately. Let's play our tap land. And we're going to pass so we don't die to combat tricks. Might die to Murex instead. Um, what's worse? So this is going to deal us one no matter what. So we'll just block the Murex. If they have a trick, that's it. Okay, good game. A little too fast there. Yep, we'll keep it. Tap land interaction on turn two. We have a way to get our mangler into the graveyard. We'll pass for now. See what they play. Okay, that's good enough. Just counter that. Take our one. And we're just going to thirst for discovery. Most likely. Okay. We can get a land. Iconoclast. Okay, so we're going to go for cut down. Oh, they're not giving it haste, right? I'm going to take my two, I think. Because I want to get the mangler into the graveyard. So we're going to go thirst for discovery. Decline, discard two Dusk Manglers. We can go cut down and go for the throat. Just keep their threats off the board. They get to stick something here. Liberator doesn't really do much against us. And we're boy. Okay. Gain a life. Oh, we should have played the untapped land. That was a misplay on my part. We're going to take some damage here. Unfortunately. Okay. Okay, we can surprise them with the uh, with the Dusk Mangler here. Probably not expecting this. So they sack a creature. Okay, that goes to a 4-5, five, 5-6. Five, Block like that. Okay. Just do that again. We'll graveyard shift again, and we'll double block the Lurgoyf this time, I think. Okay, Iconoclast. We cannot discard Mirror Shell Crab and graveyard shift. So we're gonna graveyard shift again. Let's see what they choose to sacrifice. And we have a nice double block on the Lurgoyf. Okay, we should be in a decent spot to stabilize here. I just play this out? Probably. Let's pressure them. Assuming they're just going to take the five here. So we would take three if they wanted to uh, start to attack. Throw their creatures away. But I'm not going to leave Mirror Shell Crab for a counter. Because we might not actually get a target. Yeah, see, we would have just gotten got by the Death Bonnet Sprout. So no attacks yet. 5-7 has a good attack. You can kill two of their creatures, and they would have to triple block. Choosing to chump. And then... We're just going to Dusk Mangler again. 5-3-3. Five three, three. We can make this guy bigger. <laughs> okay, good game. Inspired by an exciting new creature from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, the Goblin Tomb Raider. 
It's a one mana one two that gets plus one plus oh and haste as long as you control another artifact. So we're gonna lean heavily into the artifact theme for this deck and our other powerful build around the Patchwork Automaton. A two mana artifact that gets a plus one plus one counter whenever we cast an artifact spell. It also has ward two, which is nice. So of course we're playing all of the fantastic aggressive one drops that also happen to be artifacts like Rabbit Battery, Ginger Brute, and the best one in my opinion, the Reinforced Ronin, since it lets us trigger Patrick Automaton over and over again. To round out the deck, we're also playing Voldaren Epicure and Riveteer's Requisitioner as good threats that, although don't trigger the Automaton, do provide artifacts to sacrifice to the Sakenzin Smelter. Finally, a few tricks in Monstrous Rage and Blazing Crescendo that can generate huge amounts of damage, and a few copies of Sticky Fingers to help us punch through a large Automaton and generate more treasure for the Smelter. So that's the deck, let's jump into the games. All right, we'll keep this. We'll go turn one. Let's go Epicure on turn one. If we draw the Patchwork Automaton, we'll be happy we kept Rabbit Battery in our hand for another trigger. There you go, there's the Automaton. So let's hit them for one. Next turn, probably put Sticky Fingers on Automaton since it will be difficult for them to deal with. And we can go Automaton. Battery. Ronin. They can trade with the Battery or the Epicure. I'm not super concerned about that. Because I don't think they're going to want to. They're going to need that to ramp out their threats. And we'll pass the turn. Get to trigger Automaton again next turn. And if they have a 4-drop... Okay, this is fine. We get to hit with the Automaton again. We could trade... Um, yeah, we have a treasure, so we're just going to play both. We can still play the Crescendo. Let's bash them for a bunch. Let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There you go. Good game. Ooh, that was quick. Brutal. That was a nice showing. Yes, yeah, this is good enough. Go Tomb Raider, turn one. Automaton, turn two. And hopefully we can start triggering it. Okay, a Sunshot Militia. Not what I expected to see. No reason to attack, so we'll just pass for now. a 5-2, 5-3. So if they double block, we're trading one for one. I don't really like that. I think I'm just going to blitz this in for now. We'll get our treasure. Assuming they want to block. We'll get our treasure. Draw a card. Hopefully we can start triggering this automaton. So next turn we could go... Okay, get rid of our stuff. Alright, we like that. We like an attack there. That's nice. So, hmm. Tomb Raider... Crescendo, hope to hit a land. Feels decent to me. Just use it as a burn spell. Alright, so we know what we're doing next turn. We have to play the Requisitioner. That was kind of a greedy attack from them. I don't really know how their deck wins, but that felt a little bit greedy. Just blitz this. See if they want to block. Is this way we get our treasure now? And then, okay. So we don't get the treasure now, unfortunately. But we'll wait. We don't lose anything by um, not using the treasure. Because it is a one-time use thing. That 
that's oh activated the sorcery okay that makes sense why they did that there okay so we could go plus three plus one trade with that thing let's see if we go automaton hmm we equip rabbit battery double crescendo but that's not trample that's not very good um hmm let's blitz We'll attack with both, and we'll crescendo to trade. Wow, no block. Hmm. Can they kill me out of nowhere? So... I think we just do this. And pass. And hopefully they can't kill us here. I don't really know what this card is capable of. Okay, that's fine. And, okay. Thought they were gonna maybe tap the militia as well. Okay, draw two. Create a map, do it again. Okay. I think we got him though. Oh no, they played another creature. Okay. Alright, we're at two and then they got us. Ooh, nice. Okay, that was a close one. One more turn, maybe? Let's start with Epicure. Next turn we can double spell, rabbit battery, and sticky fingers. Okay, they got a ruby. Okay. I'm assuming they're not gonna want to lose that thing, so we're gonna attack with both. I think we'll put this on the Epicure. We're fine losing either of these. Not that we can not that they can block anyway. Pass turn. Next turn we can smelter for a 3-1. Expecting some big fella though. Okay, yearling, that's fine. Okay, the chomp. Here, we get to draw at least. Okay. Do we No, we need the artifacts for the smelter. Okay. So here we'll go like this. Uh, do we drop Ronin? I think so. I'll trade Ronin for the... Um, I'll trade Ronin for the Yearling if they want that trade. Okay. See, they're on six mana. Other chomp. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's do Ronin. We could do Smelter, make another three one. They have to trade. Do I want the crescendos until my next turn? It enables a nice attack here. I'm gonna go for that. So we'll pay the one, we'll sack. And we'll attack. Ooh, down to four. Okay. Wonder if our opponent has something to stabilize here. They do not. The deck was inspired by a powerful new uncommon from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, Captain Storm, Cosmium Raider. It's a 2-2 that puts a plus one plus one counter on target pirate whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control. We're also playing four copies of Goblin Tomb Raider, a one mana 2-2 haste when we control an artifact. So of course we want to play tons of cheap artifacts like Experimental Synthesizer, Mirren Bane Splitter, Bard Batterfist, and Scrapwork Mutt. We're also playing three copies of Invasion of Kaladesh that puts an artifact into play and then flips into a giant flying vehicle. We're also playing Twin Shot Sniper to trigger our artifact stuff, plus give us some ways to deal with pesky blockers or pick off the last few points of damage. 
We're playing Third Path Iconoclast that triggers off of a ton of our spells, including the last card we're playing, Zoetic Cliff, a 3-mana 5-4 haste with Discover 3, a very powerful uncommon in this deck. Although you can play this deck without them, I am playing a few rare dual lands to make sure we curve out as often as we can. So, that's the deck, let's jump into the games. Yeah, this looks pretty good. We get to go turn one, Tomb Raider. We might have a chance to hit a land off of the Synthesizer. If not, we'll just uh, play our second mountain and then play another Tomb Raider. All right, so let's go Synthesizer first. If we hit a mountain, we'll be really happy. Um, let's just play our land, it's totally fine. Next turn, we could animate the Synthesizer, which is kind of interesting. Um, good double spell. I think it's better. We'll do this. Bash them for four. Or a trade is fine too. Um, next turn looks like Twin Shot Sniper, the tough cookie. We also get a trigger if we play the Zoetic Glyph, but I think we want to just be mana efficient here. Play the Twin Shot Sniper. No blocks here. Okay, so I think it's Synthesizer plus Glyph. So again, let's see if we hit a land. We have chump blockers. Okay, that works out. So glyph. Let's animate. I want to be able to attack now, I think. So we're gonna do this. Let's just hit for five. We can double block the tough cookie, or we could just chump block the Samut. So if it's a haste creature, we'll probably just block Ruby. Nothing here. Okay, so. Let's go. Sit for five. See what happens. Okay, opponent going to four. I think we're gonna do this because we can, if we get, get two more damage, we wanna keep it hidden that we have the Twin Shot Sniper in case we can just finish them off for the last two damage. So we'll probably just attack all here and then should be able to Twin Shot Sniper for the win. That's interesting. Probably just take, take it if they attack with that. All right, so they tapped out. Let's see, that's two, four, eight. This doesn't have trample, so we'll block the ones with trample. Oh, without trample, I mean. We'll trade here. I'll take eight. They can draw a card. Let's see why not. And then we just attack them back. They can draw. We don't care about this. Okay, so we have four mana remaining for the sniper. There's jam. And I think this is lethal anyway. All right, good game. Yeah, this looks good enough. We'll just get our tap land down. Turn to Captain Storm. And then we'll probably play Synthesizer. If, if we don't hit a land, well, either way, we're gonna play Synthesizer, hope to hit a land. So we'll go Synthesizer. Hmm, okay. Um, so we can double spell either way. I think we'll just do this now. This gets it out of range of cut down, if that's what they have. Let's see if we hit a land, counter. Okay, so no cut down. So that's good. Um, we don't have any one mana spells. Hmm. Do we play Synthesizer here? I think so. It just gives us so much gas. So we're not going to be able to play whatever we hit off of it. Because I, I don't think we have a single one mana spell in the deck. 
that's blue. And then hopefully no removal. Okay. What does our opponent have? Prologue to Phyresis. So we're playing against Toxic Something. Next turn we get to go Iconoclast. Plus Gain Splitter. Unfortunate that they had some removal there. Um, we could Zoetic Glyph and just start bashing them. Feels pretty good. But I think we're going to wait on that because I want to... Let's have them use removal if they want to on the 1-1. One, one. So we're setting up a good turn next turn. It's a little bit slower this way, but now we get to go Glyph on one of the Synthesizers. And if, they're, if they struggle with removal here, we're in a pretty good spot. I think we're going to go Glyph on this. So we get our trigger. Augury. Okay. They're going to need to have some serious gas in their hand, I think, to come back here. Removal. Okay, counter spell. That's fine. Hit them for 5 down to 11. Iconoclast does work. Because it is not legendary, even though it kind of looks like it's a legend. Put it back to 12. Removing Iconoclast. Okay. So here, let's see what we hit. Okay. I think we'll just. Oh, I can't even just. I can't even channel that because it is not in my hand. I can't actually discard it. But that's all right. Hopefully, no board wipes here. We are in a good spot. If they don't have board wipes, they have like Brotherhood's End or something, we'll be a little sad. Let's see. We're at four. Five. Removal. Yes, they have removal. Okay, six. Again, let's see what we hit. We may have a way to generate some haste. Okay, so land. I think we equip to just present the most damage. Yeah, let's just equip. We want them to use removal here. All right, one. And hopefully they can't generate four poison. Nice. All right. That was a close one, I think. This looks like a good hand. We'll go Captain Storm on turn two. See what we're walking into. Some kind of counter spell, I'm assuming. Nope. Okay. Ooh, white. What are we up against here? So I think we want to go Invasion of Kaladesh. Oh no, we can't. Kaladesh plus Tomb Raider. So we could Tomb Raider plus. Scrapwork Mutt feels pretty good. We'll probably discard the other one. Let's go Scrapwork Mutt first. I feel like they're likely to let this resolve. Okay. We're going to discard the other Scrapwork Mutt since we can escape it anyway, or unearth it rather. And then let's go. Hmm. Let's go Tomb Raider. And we can bash. We present a little bit less damage this way. But we get the Tomb Raider going. We're gonna go for... We cannot double spell. Could have unearth the Scrapwork Mutt and try to hit another red? But that feels kind of greedy. So let's trade with that thing. God, it's such a bad turn, though. Hmm. If we hit a red source, this works out really nice. So let's go discard. The Tomb Raider's not attacking through anyway. Yeah, that didn't really work out great. Let's just jam. We lose a creature here. But they'll take four.
glyph. Okay, that is for nine. We get to untap here to go Iconoclast, Kaladesh, make a thing, hit them for two, or this thing for two? Let's hit them for two. We're kind of in race mode a little bit. We can Twin Shot Sniper down the Kaladesh. I'll chump block the 5-4 and take damage from the 4-4. Four four. This deck can present a lot of damage pretty quickly. It's really interesting that they're doing it that way. Let's see, 5, 7, 8. Hmm. Let's do this. They can flash in a saw blades again. Put a put some stun counters on it. Sure. We're gonna attack them again. Now we're gonna attack them with this. Hmm. Now let's just attack them with both. I'm not sure if that's right or not. Captain Storm's gonna go off. Let's put it on the 1-1. One, one. Put them down to 7. We have Chump Blocks. They can transform this thing. Which I choose not to. Alright, so we're gonna block, and... I think we're gonna block this time. Do we just take 5? I would be sh They can't deal direct damage, most likely. I mean, this deck probably can't deal damage. So we're gonna let them go to put us to two. I have a suspicion that they can't. Ah. Okay, fair enough. They get to discover into a one-two. We're not dead yet. We get to go twin shot sniper, your one-two. That was a very aggressive um <laughs> board wipe there. Can they not activate this? Tap 5 untapped artifacts? Oh, not quite. Almost. Alright, so we're not dead to that yet, though. Okay. Alright, they get out of range. Uh, we have to block. Probably not good enough. We do have another lock here though, so we'll just go like this. I think we're gonna do it to this now because we may need a locker. Okay, good draw. They got us. So they were definitely in control for most of that game, but I think it was closer than it looked. This looks pretty good. Let's go turn one. Goblin Tomb Raider. Probably turn two. Interesting. Yeah, turn, turn one Tomb Raider. Probably turn two Captain Storm. We're gonna take a little bit of damage from our lands. But that's okay. Hopefully we can put some pressure on them here. Turn three, we'll just go for Batter Fist. Assuming a bounce spell, maybe? No. Slate of Hand. Looks like we're playing against Mono Blue Tempo. Hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna use our mana here. We're just gonna play the Batter Fist. We're gonna put a counter on the Goblin Tomb Raider. counter there. Oh, we could hit them for two. Maybe should have re-equipped the batter fist there. Might have been a good play. We would love another red source. A little bit choked on red at the moment. Okay, that was actually a great draw. 
So we're gonna go storm. That's fine. Just play batter fist. Put them for five. Um, Synthesizer, Glyph. We could just jam and then Twin Shot Sniper. Feels pretty good. They probably have a one mana instant, but they can't turn it into a creature. We do two for one ourselves that way. Twin Shot Sniper is the better play here. And if they just take it... Okay, not taking it. Okay, that worked out nicely. It is kind of a two for one. We're not just, it's not like a clean answer, but we are putting quite a bit of pressure on them. They're probably looking for Talarian Terror. Jin. Okay, so if we attack all, they go to one. If we glyph, I honestly don't know how this works, so let's try it. I haven't done this yet. Yeah, it pops off good. Excellent. That's what I thought would happen, but I wasn't sure. So they blocked the five, and that's lethal. Good game. Yeah, this looks great. We're gonna go Iconoclast, turn one. Uh, excuse me, turn two, we're gonna go Iconoclast. Turn three, we would love to draw land, play Batter Fist and Bane Splitter, and get some triggers on this Iconoclast. All right, so land, pass. Turn, play land, iconoclast, and hopefully it survives. His next turn will go batter fist, attack. Play pain splitter, okay. Probably just gonna recast the iconoclast. And pain splitter onto the 1 1. And then next turn, what can we do? Sacrifice a creature, this is fine, we'll sacrifice that. Okay, so here, could just go Glyph. Feels pretty good, honestly. Let's do that, let's just go Glyph on the Bane Splitter. Get a 1-1, one, one Bash for seven. Next turn, hopefully our opponent just plays a creature would be ideal for us. Skull Dweller, Okay. Honestly, I would trade. So that, that works out nicely. We get to just shoot this thing down. This is probably going to be close to game here, I'm going to imagine. And then we hit them for eight. Down to five. Hopefully no board wipes. Definitely a real possibility. Okay, they go to three, looking for an answer. And not good enough. That'll be the game. We even get to cast something off of the Discover. Good stuff. Inspired by a new uncommon from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, Zoetic Glyph. I had a deck I was working on a few months ago that I felt didn't quite get there, and this card really helped push it over the edge. We're playing a ton of cheap flying artifacts to enchant with the Glyph, like Swooping Lookout, Network Disruptor, Malkator's Watcher, and the new addition from Lost Caverns, Oaken Siren, which can also tap for blue that we can spend to cast other artifacts. We're also playing Ginger Brute that we can pay one to make unblockable except by creatures with haste. We're playing four copies of Mightstone's animation to give the deck some redundancy. Our removal suite includes three copies of Fading Hope, two Ossification, and three Annex Sentry. And rounding out the deck is four copies of Michiko's Reign of Truth, which lets us make one of our cheap flyers absolutely huge. And if you didn't notice, besides Fading Hope, every non-land card in our deck is an artifact or enchantment. So that's the deck. Let's jump into the games. Yeah, I like this. We can go turn one. Probably just get Ginger Brute down and start dashing with him. And then we would love to draw an untapped white source, or any any untapped land gives us Malkator's Watcher. Um, okay, opponent just passing here. 
Let's just attack. Hopefully we get to bounce. They just play a three drop and we'll bounce it. And then we can follow up with uh, Malkator's Watcher. If we don't draw a land, if we draw a land, we're probably just gonna go Glyph and start jamming. We get a Scry. Uh, we'll keep the land on top. And then we're gonna go for, I think, Watcher and Swooping Lookout, because that thing can block a Ginger Brute with a Zoetic Glyph on it. And then this way, if they play a creature, like if they just replay the Hammer Skull, I'm really hoping they don't have one mana removal here. If it's Sorcery Speed, fine, use it right away. Hmm, okay, that's a little bit sketchy. I don't like that they're they're gonna use it we want to use we want them to use it on watcher okay so no removal thankfully we can start bashing them in the air if they attack with hammer skull we're fine I'm down to race them they don't have ramp currently I forget how much the carnosaur costs All right, we don't care about that so they're going to deal us some damage. We get a Discover 3. Hey, that works. Love that. This is fine. And yeah, I'll leave that on top. That's good enough. And we get to draw a card. And then next turn we get to go Disruptor. Tap the Raptor. Michiko Bash you. Okay, opponent at five. Curving out nicely here. One more activation. Okay, so they get to block us here, unfortunately. Um, let's see. We're gonna give it to this. This thing doesn't have haste. But yeah, we need the mana open, so we'll just do this. And this thing doesn't have haste, so we hit them for five. All right, good game. Nice curve out there, a bunch of, against a ton of rares. Risky keep, but we have some early plays. We drew a white source, amazing. Okay, well obviously we're gonna play our land first. We're gonna play our haste feature so we can start getting in. Next turn, we'll double spell, network disruptor, plus sleeping lookout. So let's go Network Disruptor first. Tap one of their blues. So they have to counter this thing or cast the spell if they want to be able to do something. By Sweeping Lookout, get them for one. Next turn, just drop Michiko. Audi Jin, this is fine. We can attack through that. So let's go ahead and play the Tap Land. They can't put an instant in their graveyard for the Jin. So we'll just go Michiko. We can ossification that thing next turn. We have an attack, so there's no reason. There's no reason to remove the Jin. Our opponent holding priority somehow. Okay, we'll target the sweeping lookout. We'll attack with everything. Okay, opponent timing out here. Let's see if they are still playing. All right, Michiko's Reign of Truth was just too much for them. Yep, we'll keep this. We'll go for Siren on turn two. Hopefully we draw another land. Excellent, let's do it this way. Next turn, hmm. I just glyph this Oaken Siren, unless they kill it. Okay. Not doing a ton for us. We're gonna go ahead and just annex Sentry their ramp here, try and slow them down a little bit. And then next turn. So we know they play big toughness creatures. We've played against this deck quite a bit. So 5-4 is not quite big enough to get through their stuff. So we're gonna go Lookout, Lookout. We could just disrupt them, hit them for one. And we have a good turn. 
with Zoetic Glyph next turn. If we draw a land, we'll just play Might Stone's animation just to make the most use of our mana. We're not, you know, super attached to which one we play. But if we draw a land, we'll use all our mana. Okay, I guess us killing the uh, the mana dork worked out nicely for us there. They were gonna miss their third land drop. Yeah, I like this. We can go turn one, brute. Turn two, tap land, play disruptor. And then turn three, zoetic glyph. Whichever one we're more interested in. So, yeah. I mean, we don't need to trade, so why bother? And then turn three, Glyph. Probably on the Ginger Brute. Hopefully they attack here. I will trade. Okay. Um, so we'll go land. We have an attack with a Glyphed Ginger Brute. Because even if they crew, that doesn't really work. And they can block the Disruptor, I could care less, but they probably won't. So opponent down to 12. What do you have here? Oh. It's weird that they were able to hold priority. Oh, I guess because they could crew. I was wondering why they were getting an end step priority there. Let's see what you got. Surge engine, okay. Crewing the 3-4. Come on in. Okay, they put Slate of Hand in their graveyard. And not great blocks on us. Let's just go for the beatdown plan here. If they have a Fading Hope, we're really sad. Got us, okay. That's all right. I think that was worth the risk. If that resolves, we're in like such a good spot. Okay, opponent chump blocking. Fading Hope is pretty good against our deck. So I imagine they're going to Fading Hope this Ginger Brute now. Slate of Hand, okay. Another Siren. Now they know we have Network Disruptor. Hopefully we draw some of our interaction because our fading hopes and yeah that's nice um let's see let's go malkator's watcher we can block Hit them for five they're gonna know we have something but that's totally fine i'm hoping they just dump more mana into the surge engine they could have a spell pierce is fine. We're hoping that they put more mana into it. If we want them to go pay three. Surge Engine has base power five, four. Okay, just do this. They have Spell Pierce. This is fine, but we can do it before blocks. Okay, that worked. Um, Let's bottom. We can't cast that yet. Surge Engine comes down again. It's a pretty good turn cycle for us, I think. So now, just give this unblockable, I think is the right play. So we can still double spell here. If they want to bounce it. Okay, let's see what they got. So if they don't have an answer for this, they're going to be dead pretty quick. All right, so it has base, power, and toughness one. one. Why does that work? Huh, not sure I understand that interaction, but it still gets through. And we hit a, let's play Malkator's Watcher. We did hit another creature, so that's nice. We'll hold off on the Network Disruptor. If we need to uh, tap something to get through the last few points of damage, that will be nice. We'll be glad we left that available. This can't be blocked. They can make it big if they want to race us. So let's see what they want to do. I'm assuming, probably worried about another Fading Hope, like putting too much mana in it. But we do not have one right now. 
and it just cannot be blocked. So we gotta draw. Okay, so we have to draw a way to pump one of these creatures. Hmm. Okay. That is not enough, so that's four. Alright, they got us. Close one. Close one. Yep, this looks pretty good. We'll just start on the network disruptor. We don't get that much value from it right now, but still a 1-1 flyer. And we'll drop Oaken Siren next turn. If we miss on land, we can still play Annex Sentry. Looks like we might be up against Mono Red here. So let's play the Siren like we planned. And it can block if they want to use... Hmm, how would we feel if they used a trick here? Okay, no tricks, so that's good. Okay, draw and discard. Hmm. Let's attack first. Let's play sentry, targeting scrapwork mutt. And we have good blocks on their stuff. A 1-4 is going to be pretty tough for mono red to deal with. We'd love them to just play a 3-mana creature. Okay. So I'll target creature or planeswalker. So this is... Deals that much damage plus one. So Voldaren Epicure does not work out great. I'm gonna play Sweeping Lookout. Keep the Fading Hope available. And let's not attack with the Sentry. Because I believe late game will favor us. I hope. And we just need to draw like a Michiko's Reign of Truth, Zoetic Glyph, some way to really start to put some pressure on them. Because I believe we're ahead in this game so far. Okay, that's a little bit scary. So that's... Red sources are plus two now. We don't want to bounce that to their hand. Um, sure. It would be fine if they blocked that. That's not of huge concern to us. Down to 11. Yeah, it's kind of an awkward draw. Michiko's Reign of Truth pretty much just ends the game. Sunfire Torch, okay. Whenever this creature attacks, you may sacrifice it. Deals two damage to any target. So if they recast Epicure, we take three damage directly. I think that's a little bit better than letting them attack and sacrifice the Sun Torch. Um, let's bottom. Okay, unearthing. Sure, discard. Sure. They're almost out of gas, right? Okay, so they get to attack with the Scrapwork Mutt. I, I didn't see that line. So they can sacrifice it, and they're going to deal four damage to Sentry, which is fine. And then for red or artifact source, do we want to take four or do we block with a lookout? Um, let's take four this time. We'll block next turn. Okay, our turn. Let's let me just exile that. Yeah, I mean, what else are we doing? I'm not sure what else we're doing with our turn, so we'll just go ahead and do this. We'll hit them for four. This looks so ridiculous because we have no way to pump our creatures up. This game would be over if we drew one of the, like, 12 to 16 ways we have to generate damage. Unfortunately, they're hanging in on this one. Take three from the Epicure. The Anvil is definitely scary. They're gonna get to go, like, deal us three every turn. Literally, all we have to do is draw a single Thank God. Okay, <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Because we go Oak and Siren, hit them for eight, and that should be the game. If they can remove Oak and Siren, they're still in it. All right. Good game. So if we drew that Zoetic Glyph like three or four turns earlier, that game was over. That was a really awkward draw. Yeah, this looks good to me. Pass on the Fading Hope. Probably not going to bounce anything right now. Next turn, let's go Oaken Siren. 
And we can play Malkator's Watcher, like attack, play Malkator's Watcher. Hmm, that's interesting. Do we just go for the Zoetic Glyph or do we bounce their thing? I think, let's see, we could also double spell. I think we're just gonna bounce their thing, play Oaken Siren. Um, let's bottom. We have three mana. This is fine. We're gonna draw another land at some point here. Oaken Siren, hit them. Because then we can play Zoetic Glyph, the Siren, second main phase, play a Watcher. Hopefully no Chomp. Okay, they have the Chomp. So we don't get to double spell. Or do we get to double spell? So we're gonna go Glyph, the Siren, Bash you for five, play Ginger Brute, second main phase. That's a nice turn. And then let's see what they've got. So they have five mana. The Drake is pretty good, but we get to Ossification that, which is fine. And hit you for six. Down to eight, play a Watcher. Okay, we're looking good. Hopefully no more Dracosaurs. If they cast another Dracosaur, we need to have a way to pump up this Ginger Brute. If they play the 6-6 six, six for three, we can sentry that. Okay, that's not good enough. It's Quint does not help you. You can't afford to play it. It's interesting they don't attack there. What's better? Sentry the It's Quint? No, sentry the 2-2. Two, two. Hit you for six, seven? Not quite enough. So we'll exile this. We'll hit you for six. Opponent down to two. And we have a couple paths to victory here. Let's see what kind of crazy stuff they can do. If they can... Yep, here comes Carnosaur. So hopefully no reach or flying. Ooh, they got the Dracosaur. Okay. But no haste still. Wow, no attacks. That's interesting. If we attack all... I think that works. Because yeah, we say, can't be blocked except by creatures with haste. And we don't attack with this. They can block the siren, and they take two. What? Does that have haste? Oh, it has haste! Oops. I didn't realize that stupid thing had haste. Oh, well. Alright. So, ooh, Michika! Oh, wow, we got lucky there. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> oh, lucky rip. That's funny. Okay, well, so It's Gwynth has haste. They just didn't attack with it. Yeah, this looks fantastic. We'll go turn one brute. Turn two watcher. Hopefully we draw land. And we can start bashing with the glyph. No land yet, but that's okay. We're going to be playing another dinosaur deck. Very popular right now. Okay, no land yet, unfortunately. We get to play another Watcher. And let's see what they got. So turn three, Hammer Skull. This is fine. Hmm. I think it's just another Watcher and pass. Well, obviously attack with the two Watchers and then pass. Love to draw land, or Michiko's Reign of Truth would be really nice right now as well. We didn't get to punish their slow start, unfortunately. They can fight a 1 1. Topiary Stomper. That's fine. We'll chump block if they want to attack. Okay, no attacks. That works out. I don't think. Is Triumphant Chomp an instant? I don't believe so. All right, so now we get to put some pressure on. And if they have a way to remove the Watcher, we get to draw a card and discover three. Dracosaur. Okay, so now we just... Well, if they don't have an answer here, we just tap the thing and deal them seven. Let's see, what do you got? Nothing. Good game. 
Nice curve out against the dinosaurs there. It's built around Oni Cult Anvil, a powerful artifact from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Whenever one or more artifacts leave the battlefield during our turn, we create a 1-1 artifact, and it has an activated ability. Sacrifice an artifact to drain our opponent for one. So we're playing tons of other artifacts like Patchwork Automaton that grows when we cast artifact spells, Reinforced Ronin that can be recast over and over, and even triggers the anvil when it bounces back to our hand. We have Mishra's Research Desk and Synthesizer for gas, Epicure and Blood Tithe Harvester as aggressive creatures that generate blood tokens, which are artifacts, and of course when we sacrifice the blood tokens we can trigger the anvil. We have four copies of Dragon Spark Reactor that triggers whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control, and then we can sacrifice it to deal tons of direct damage. And finally we have a few copies of Go for the Throat for some interaction. So that's the deck, let's jump into the games. Yeah, this looks pretty good. We get to start on Ronin. Turn two, Automaton. Turn three, Anvil plus Ronin. Okay, Lore Keeper. Go Automaton first. Turn three. Hmm, a little awkward if we don't draw a red source here. Chomp on the automaton, maybe? No. Okay. Ooh, we'll take that. Oh, great draw. Okay, so we get to go... I think we're gonna go reactor first. So we want to get all of the triggers on the reactor, because that's kind of our reach. Hit them for five. Opponent already down to 12, so good start here. Another lore keeper. Ooh, they want to race, huh? I think we're just gonna go double, double anvil. Because then the race situation kind of becomes untenable for them. Like, I don't think they're going to be able to deal us 15. If they play a Hammer Skull, we get to attack into that. Dracosaur we can attack into as well. This is fine. So we get to go Ronin. Dragon Spark Reactor your Dracosaur and hit you? Woo! Okay, that works out. And then we jam. Nice. That was quite the curve out there. Sounds a little awkward. We want to get off to faster starts than this. But the Epicure was a good draw there. Let's see what we're up against. Yes, guy, control of some sort. So let's try and hit for one. We'll go reactor. Probably gonna catch a counter spell here. No counter spell. Faithful mending. Okay. Actually, don't know what I'm playing against here. If they reanimate Jingataxius, we have double go for the throat. Let's go land, reactor. I think they're going to have a hard time interacting with these reactors. We'll crack the blood token on our end step. Okay. Okay, cool. Got a little combo deck. Built around the tunnel grinder. Okay. Let's crack this. We'll discard the swamp. Okay, anvil's nice. So we'll go anvil. Trigger, trigger. Epicure. Trigger, trigger. Let's go ahead and do this. They're not not interacting with them right now. So hopefully we can get them dead. 
with these uh, reactors because we can just start dealing damage to them directly. Can they reanimate this thing? If they reanimate Atroxa, we get to just go for the throat. So, let's see what we hit. Okay, play land. Let's attack first. And I think, I think we're gonna wait on that. So let's do this. We'll sacrifice this. Actually, I don't know if that was a good play. I probably should have just cracked it, but I'm thinking like leave my mana open for whatever I hit. Um, is this only as a sorcery? No, I can just activate it whenever I want. Okay, so they're gonna go Faithful Mending. One with the Multiverse. So we're playing against kind of a cool deck here. But let's see what they can do to go off against us. If they just reanimate Atroxa. I don't know how they bring it back into play though. Or is there hope to just discover it? Okay, that's cool. Nil. No secret escapes my grasp. An up to one target creature. Do we do this now? I think so. We're not hitting a creature, but we gotta try to get them dead. Hmm, that puts them at nine and eleven. Is that enough? So that's eight. So I go to eight. We need to keep four mana open. I think this is enough. We get seven. Triggers. Nice. All right. Let's go for research desk. Just use our mana. We're gonna play Automaton next turn. Let's see, red white. Interesting. Okay. Not what I expected there. So let's go ahead and drop Automaton. Next turn, we'll probably. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. So they gain two life. Yeah. Obviously, we're not blocking. Let's see what we hit. Yeah, we'll play another automaton. I like that. Get a trigger, and we'll pass the turn. So they can attack us with Circuit Mender, which we're fine with. And then we have a block on the companion. Happy to take two here. Extraction Specialist, good thing we did not block. So I think this is Double Spell, Go for the Throat, Dragon Spark Reactor, Attack. We'll get some triggers. And then we really need to get an Anvil in play because we can start to go off with the Reactor. So remember, Unearth does not trigger Automaton. This. Is this. Oh, that's sweet. I haven't played against this yet. This is cool. At the beginning of your end step, return those cards under their owner's control at the beginning of your next upkeep. It's like kind of risky though, right? Well, let's see. Because they're not blocking, but creatures, they get plus one, plus oh, and haste. But we have blocks on them. Let's take the black. Play the harvester. And plus one, plus oh, they're getting back. 
Let's go like this. And we'll keep the automaton back. That's awesome. I have not played against this yet. This is really cool. We have no enchantment removal. But again, if we trade, they don't get the exile. Because it's at the beginning of their end step. So they're going to get the card either way when these creatures... Oh, when the circuit mender dies. Sure. 8-6. That's interesting. Can we afford to do that? So I think we're going to take one hit. As crazy as that sounds. We'll keep go for the throat up. Okay, so opponent keeping their creatures in play this time. Let's use our blood token. Okay, so now we're going to go go for the throat to destroy this thing. Um, seven... And then we can keep the reactor available. Circuit Mender plus Nahiri's Resolve. Kind of interesting combination there. Itali. All right. And it has haste. Their jank got us. And I don't think we can survive. Brutal. All right, so we get to go kill you, kill you. The most we can block is two damage. They get us. Damn. That was a cool deck. We're gonna keep this. Turn two automaton. Automaton, pass the turn. Hopefully our opponent picks it up a little bit. Good. <laughs> Maybe this is a new deck for them. Milling four. Okay, so they're the animator with squirming emergence. That's cool. Let's see what we hit. First of all, in case we hit a land. All right, we'll play Research Desk. It's fine. And then that gets us out of range of the Gnawing Vermin. And next turn, we're going to play Double Spell, so we'll go Harvester. Let's hit for three. They're, they don't have green mana yet, but they do get to reanimate an Atroxa if they have green mana. We don't interact with the graveyard at all. Okay, opponent passing. Let's play Anvil. Just get a little bit more damage in. Play land. Let's attack. We can't stop them from reanimating, so they're gonna get the trigger on Atroxa either way. So there's no point in keeping go for the throat up, so we'll just play the Harvester. And we're going to keep the blood token available. Portal. Okay, it's a little scary. Let's see. Really not sure what their deck is about to do. So let's find out. Opponent thinking, do you have it? Stuck on green, perhaps. Our turn. Okay, Anvil's a good draw. All right, good. Inspired by the adventure spell, Burn Together, which appears on Kala's Sellsword. This lets us have one of our creatures deal damage equal to its power to any target, but we then have to sacrifice that creature. 
This is a potent combination with Cacophony Scamp. First, the Scamp deals combat damage to a player. Second main phase, cast Burn together and throw the Scamp at your opponent's face. But when the Scamp dies, its ability triggers, letting you hit them again. So potentially you can deal three times the Scamp's power to your opponent in a single turn. We're also playing tons of ways to pump the Scamp, like Ancestral Anger, Monstrous Rage, and Blazing Crescendo. And of course, many games will just play out like Mono Red likes to do, committing tons of cheap threats to the board like Phoenix Chick, Monastery Swift Spear, Kumano, Electrostatic Infantry, that all like to beat down and trigger off of all the instants we're casting. We're also playing two copies of Pyrrhic Blast for some redundancy in the Fling Effect category. So, that's the deck. Let's jump into the games. Yeah, this looks like a really nice hand. Nice that we win the, the coin flip as well. We'll go Swift Spear into Infantry, and then just start bashing. And this deck can operate without the fling effects. So if we don't draw that, that's totally fine. All right, two damage to that. Mm, let's just play the Infantry. Hopefully no removal here. It's not the end of the world, if they have it. Okay, no. Let's go for Ancestral Anger here. It's harder to kill. And then we'll go Ancestral Anger here. Spread the counters out a little bit. In case they have removal. All right, so our opponent already down to 12. He might be in a little bit of trouble. We're probably going to start on Blazing Crescendo. All right, that, that was enough for them. You get wins like that with decks like these. Yep, definitely going to keep this. Unfortunately, not on the draw, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and start with... Hmm, we'll start with Swift Spear. Start to get some damage in. Okay, so they have a Bounce spell, I'm assuming. Could be Consider. But we want to probably play around a Bounce here. So let's just play Kumano. Trigger, Swift Spear. I'm assuming Bounce... Yeah, it's not the end of the world here. Let's hit them, and we'll play Scamp second main. Because Scamp can really go off with all these instants that we have. Okay, impulse. Looks like we may be playing against Mono Blue here, the uh, tempo deck. All right. All right, so let's play Phoenix Chick. We'll Monstrous Rage before damage here, I think. Okay, return this to our hand. Sounds good. Do they have another one? I think we have to play like they don't, maybe? Now let's just, let's just recast the Phoenix Chick. If they want to counter it, that's fine. We're not going to... We're not going to do this yet. Because what you want to do with the scamp is pump it up, hit them with it, and then sacrifice it to deal them a ton of damage. Okay, they play the Jin. Let's see. What do we do here? Ancestral Anger the Scamp? Let's see what we draw. Don't mind a land, actually. Come on, no bounce. Okay, good. And then... Ooh, this could be interesting. Plus 2, plus 0, oh, and Trample. I feel like they're going to be really incentivized to block this. Let's just see. Hopefully no bounce here. That would be unfortunate. But again, we kind of got to play like they don't have that. Alright. Um... <laughs> Let's assume that they're not going to block anything and just play out like this. Um, hmm. Let's decline for now, play Swift Spear, pass the turn. Next turn, hopefully we draw a... Hmm, that's interesting. Probably just, I mean, anything is good here. A land is good, any combat trick is good. Probably a combat trick is best. 6-4. See if they can play a terror here. Nope. Okay. So. 
Just attack. Oh, I kind of forgot about this. Um, yeah, I like that. We'll do that. One, two, three, four, five. Just go like six, seven. Bounce. Yeah, one, two, three, four. We gotta wait one more turn. Oh wait, no we don't. Let's see if they have a counter. This is definitely a risky play, but I think it'll be fun to kill them this way. <laughs> Let's see if they have the counter spell here. Did they counter Calisel Sword? Okay, that does nothing. Alright, good game. Hmm. We really need to draw a creature. This is just going to be too slow. If we don't draw a creature, we just like automatically lose. I think this is a little bit better. We'll put the Pyrrhic Blast on the bottom. We really want to top deck that. You know, like turn four, turn five. We don't really want that in our opening hand. Spyglass Siren. Let's go ahead and attack. We'll go Monstrous Rage. Pump this thing up. Then for four. Decline for now. We'll play the other scamp. I think this thing presents a little bit more damage. On the board still. Okay, let's just do this now. Okay, unfortunately we did not draw. Do we? Hmm, that's interesting. Do we attack with that? Nah, I don't think so. Okay, five. Now do we sacrifice it? Yeah, let's sacrifice it now to deal with another five. And then, hopefully next turn, we can untap with this scamp Ancestral Anger. If we draw a land, we get to go Ancestral Anger plus Crescendo. Should be lethal if they don't have removal. I'd be shocked if they don't have removal here, though. An explorer might be good for us, though. Hmm, that's interesting. No block. You can ninjutsu something. Not gonna throw the scamp away. They might have some kind of... Okay, so you can steal... What are you gonna steal? Crescendo, probably. Makes sense. You can recast. Sure. So we'll go Ancestral Anger. We'll give Trample. Another Mountain. That's unfortunate. Um, attack with both. Okay. Opponent to four. We'll decline. One more spell there. Maybe gets us over the finish line here. Let's see what our opponent can do with this attack. If they want to discard our land, this is totally fine. Oh, excuse me, that doesn't matter. Kind of risky attack there from them. Mm, that's unfortunate. Yeah, no block still, so a ninjutsu coming in. This gives all their creatures ninjutsu. Moon Circuit Hacker, they're gonna get to draw a card. Hit us. Yep. Might have a hard time getting through. We have a little bit of time. We have a not a great life total, but maybe two turns. Ancestral anger would be really nice. Swift spear. Mm. Alright, so one more turn maybe. So we can't block. It was pretty close. Quit until Kamigawa is I can run circles around you. I mean, they know we're not going to attack, right? Or no, we're not going to block, rather. No blocks here. We'll go to seven. Take it easy. I've got this. Okay, so they get to trigger Kaido again. Block, lock down my swift spear.
Du du du. Du 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 du. Okay, so Swift Spear can Let's attack again. Oh, interesting. This. Okay, they're making the drone. Yeah, too many lands off the top there. This looks pretty good. Start on the scamp. Next turn, we'll just play the infantry. Okay, looks like we're up against the... Uh, I guess it could be fairies, but more likely we're up against the proliferate deck. There's a uh, there's a ton of those running around in the play queue. Might catch a counter spell here. Doesn't matter. Ooh, interesting. Didn't expect that. So that's the uh, squirming emergence, like reanimator deck. Okay, one three. Let's see. So we could go Ancestral Anger, Blazing Crescendo, probably just Blazing Crescendo here gets a counter, Ancestral Anger here gets another counter. Yeah, let's see if we hit a land. We're going to give the Scamp Trample either way. Hmm, that's interesting. The Phoenix Chick doesn't have an attack, but we may want to play it anyway. I think if we just play the Ancestral Anger now, we guarantee a lot more damage here. Let's just get in. Interesting if they block here. Yeah, that's fine. So now the question is, do we sacrifice? I think so. So we're going to sacrifice, proliferate, five damage. And then next turn, we can if we get an attack through with the electrostatic infantry, we can hit them and then sacrifice with the cell sword. If they reanimate right now, I don't think they're going to be able to. They only have five cards in their graveyard. And I think the squirming emergence, they need to have a certain number of permanents. So they would need like seven permanents, I think. Let's see if they have the removal here. I think if they had it, it would have been snapped off. Okay, so squirming emergence to get back the Picklock Prankster. Okay, so we can go Phoenix Chick. Hmm. I don't think this matters. I think we just do Ancestral Anger. Let's see if they have a Spell Pierce. Okay, Anger. Anger. <laughs> and then... We can play Phoenix Chick, which this should be Exaxes. They block three. And that's Exaxes. And then we had the Cell Sword to deal another 11, potentially. Yeah, this is nice. Start on Phoenix Chick, I think. Just to start getting damage in. We don't have a huge turn set up for the Scamp right away, so we'll save that for later. Let's hit them for one. Hopefully they use some removal here. Nope, that's fine. We'll play the infantry. We might catch a uh, cut down or play with fire or something. Yep, that's quite all right. Vampire. Blood Tithe Harvester. Okay, so... Hmm. We play Swift Spear, put Ancestral Anger on it. It has three power. Then we could attack with the Blazing Crescendo as well. Let's see what we draw. Let's go Anger is plus one plus O, oh, so that would be a two three. Let's put it here. I'm not sure that we're gonna get an attack off with this. All right, that worked out fine. I'm gonna attack anyway with the Swift Spear. If they want to block with the Harvester, that's fine. Yeah, this is fine. Not sure if that was the right play or not. I mean, we could hold that back. Okay. That's interesting. Crescendo. Let's see who we hit. Sure. Man, I wish we had one more land. If we draw a land, this might work out really nicely. Oh, let's go. Okay. So we hit them for seven. And then we... Oh, no. Yep. Sorry. 
Getting excited. Okay, target this creature, target them. So they go to two. And then they need removal. We have lots of ways to kill them here. Our deck's not playing, uh... Funny enough, our deck is not playing, like, play with fire or lightning strike. Kind of for the memes a little bit, but... Definitely feeling that in games like this. But I think it was right to sacrifice it there. Just presented so much damage. Okay, and they get us. All right, let's see. So we can go scamp. That's interesting. If we... Yeah, that works, right? Target creature. Deals one. And then when it dies, it deals one. All right, good game. <laughs> Like this. So turn one, swift spear. We don't need the scamp on turn one. Because it's really more of like a combo piece almost. Okay, recruitment officer. Um, do we want to bait something out here? Let's just draw, because this enables an attack as well. And then we can play the scamp and just hit for three. Probably no blocks here. Um, let's see. Okay, so soldiers. Thalia's pretty good against us, honestly. That's interesting. Flash creature, maybe? Okay, we want to get our trigger on this. Let's just jam with both. Let's see what they want to do here. Okay, they want to counter. So that would be a 2 3. I'll just put it here. Our triggers. Okay. Mm, it's declined for now. This is presenting a little more damage. Let's see what you got. Another recruitment officer coming back down. Okay, Kamado is pretty good draw actually. Let's us attack here. They're really disincentivized to block the... Do we attack? Yeah, let's just attack with everything. Kind of signaled the way we tapped there that we don't have the instant. But they're really disincentivized to block. Okay, so... This is totally fine. We're just going to kill the Sentinel. We go to 7. We're going to decline again. We're going to play the scam. Because if we get to hit them... We can do the whole combo where we can deal them six damage with the scamp. We hit them, we sack it to the Pyrrhic Blast, and it deals additional damage. Okay. Lots of blockers now. <laughs> okay, they clogged the board up pretty nice here. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's hit with the scamp. See if they want to take this. Might be kind of interesting. We could sacrifice. Ooh, that, that works. So we're going to target this. Sacrifice this. Maybe I could have attacked. And then, do we target them? Or do we target, like, another creature? It's only one damage. Let's get rid of their engine. So in this way, we still get to deal two damage to them. We are not going to take advantage of that just yet. Let's just attack all. If they let any creature through, I think they lose, right? Okay, cool. Interesting. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> Built around the extremely powerful common, Talarian Terror. It's a 5-5 with Ward 2 that normally costs 7 mana, but if we manage to fill our graveyard with instants and sorceries, it can cost as little as just 1 blue mana. So we're playing tons of cheap spells like Slate of Hand, Consider, and Moment of Truth that give us card draw, selection, and sometimes put cards into our graveyard. We have some cheap interaction like Fading Hope, Spell Pierce, Essence Scatter, and Make Disappear to bounce and counter our opponent's threats. And we have some big card draw spells like Thirst for Discovery and Flow of Knowledge to refill our hand later in the game. Finally, we have four copies of Delver of Secrets that can flip pretty consistently thanks to all of the spells we're running. So, that's the deck. Let's jump into the games. We'll definitely keep this. We have our turn one Delver. This card is definitely high variance. This card can be the best card or the worst card in your deck depending on your luck. Like we could flip this right now and start bashing them for three, which would be amazing. Okay, just the land. Go ahead and we'll hit for two. Keep our instants up. If they play something really good, we can counter it. If not, we'll just play the moment of truth. This also gets them to play around counter spells, so. Um <laughs> That's fine. We'll let that happen. Okay. But we're gonna leave spell pierce up for the reanimation spell. Let's grab Fading Hope. And we'll put Slate of Hand into the graveyard. Start to get some instants in there for our Talarian Terror. Okay. Still haven't flipped that Delver yet. As you can see, again, very high risk, high reward. They have to get to eight permanents for the Titan. Um, okay. It's fine. We'll let that go. Maybe we can just counter the... Nah, whatever. This is fine. I don't care about this. They can spin their wheels. We need to keep our counter spell for the important card, which is that reanimation spell. I'll flip. Nope. Alright. Little awkward draw from us here. Would have been nice to have at least one card draw spell. Come on. Let's flip them. Nice. Okay, that's good. So we're, we're putting them on a clock now. And let's go ahead and hit for six. And we'll just pass with our mana up. They're on a two-turn clock. Even with the life gain from the Faithful Mending, still on a two-turn clock. They do get to play around our Spell Pierce now. But if they go for this thing, let's see what they do. Okay, so we get to Spell Pierce. They didn't play a land, so that works out. We might just get a scoop here. No, not yet. Okay, so let's see. One into my hand. We need counter magic. Let's see if we can't draw something here. No. Let's play Slate of Hand. No counter magic yet. Let's hit for six. And we can pass with both of these instants up. Let's consider to see what we draw. Might as well play out a terror. They know we don't have counter magic now, but if they reanimate. Okay, so we have to sacrifice some creatures. Hmm. It's really unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Just couldn't draw the extra counter spell. We have so many. But we can bounce things, like if they try to... Okay. 
save? Is this gonna oh, wreck us right now? Oh my god! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That was close, actually. Yep. We like this. Turn one Delver. See if we can't get lucky here. That's quite all right. Let's go for some of our instants. Um, kind of want... Hmm, hmm, hmm. We'll hit lands. We'll take this. And we'll consider... We have Essence Scatter. Probably want to draw this. We'll hit them for one. Excellent. We'll go ahead and flip. Hit for three. And we're in a good spot. We've got Counter Magic up plus Thirst for Discovery. Okay, this is fine. Let's go ahead and draw. Are we playing against the Squirming Emergence deck again? Probably, right? Yeah, let's just, we'll discard the land. We could do this. Put one into your graveyard. So I know we have Make Disappear. They're probably not gonna play around. Let's put that into our graveyard. And we'll hit for three. They have no mill yet. So we don't necessarily like really need to keep up the uh, the counter spells here. Okay, they're gonna fill their graveyard. Go of truth. Yeah, we'll take another spell pierce. Put that in the graveyard. Now we have a one mana terror. We'll hit for three. Terror. We have double counter spell available. They're gonna have a hard time resolving one of their reanimation spells here. They have to play through the make disappear. Um, we don't care about this. We're not gonna waste counter spells on that. Um, yep, we can discard another land. Land for turn. Let's hit them with both. No reach here. I'm assuming a chump block. This is fine. I kind of want to go for this. Because if we get to draw another two mana counter, we'll have mana for both. Um, let's take this. We're not tapping out for flow of knowledge against this deck. Four, five, six, seven. We're good. So we'll pass turn. Keep all of our mana up. This is fine. They can surveil. Yeah, good game. Yep, we'll keep this. Island and pass the turn. We'll consider on end step. Should be fine. That was a waste of that. Okay. And then here... I think we'll just pass with mana up. We'll sneak this Delver in on a different turn. We'll just moment of truth. Um, yep, we'll take this. Okay, we can go land. I think we're gonna go ahead and play the... Hmm, that's interesting. I want to pass here. Because I want to burn their mana, and then thirst for discovery on their end step, since we have the basic land to discard. Okay, fine. Looks like we've got ourselves a mirror match, so this should be a fun one. All right, so let's discard this. Draw a card. We'll play our land. We'll play Delver. We'll pass the turn. We have counter spells. We have bounce. Let's go thirst again. We want to hit. Okay, this is fine. Discard land. Come on. Nice. All right, so we know that they know that we have an essence scatter. They're probably not really playing. Very many creatures though. But now they're on a clock and we've got some counter spells to protect it. 
try to hit a terror. Okay. We'll play the consider as well. Um yeah, I don't want to tap out of my second counter spell here. Alright, that works. Our turn. Let's hit them for three. And then we'll drop double terror. Actually, should we leave? Should we just play one? If we play the second one, they're still on a two turn clock. Because they would go to one. Here they go to six. So yeah, I think we're going to leave both counter spells available. And anything that doesn't interact with our creatures, I'm going to let them resolve. Because we really just need to protect these two. This is fine. Anything that blocks, bounces. And the Mind Splice Apparatus does not get them around to Larian Terror's Ward. Hmm. Return all non-land permanents not chosen this way. I think I'm going to choose... So I want to return the Aberration. I'm so confused. <laughs> Why do they have to phrase it that way? That card is awful to read. We have to flip the Delver again, but the Talarian Terror is a quicker clock, so... Okay. So they're going to go grab the Consuming Tide again, I guess? And play it again, which we can counter? All right, so let's hit them for five. Let's play Delver, see if they want to counter that first. We'll play our land, we'll play our second Terror, and we'll keep two counter spells available. And they are under some pressure to find answers. We know they have that Consuming Tide, most likely. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this. Let's see if they pay it. Let's see if they pay it. Okay, negate. And then we could do it again. They could counter us. I think we're just gonna choose this. And this is fine. And we'll keep our counter spells up. They buy themselves one extra turn. Do we counter now? I don't think so, right? Because they just get to keep doing this cycle, but it doesn't change anything. Like, we're dealing them five damage per turn because we just drop all these threats again. They're not really getting themselves out of this situation. Okay, so there's something different. Exile it instead. I'm going to pay. And then we'll pass the turn again. Because the Consuming Tide still costs them two. We get to keep a Talarian Terror, and we can counter something they play. A tricky, tricky game here. So drawing a bunch of cards. We didn't have two counter spells anyway, so we weren't... By paying the three, we weren't tapping ourselves out of a counter spell there. I just don't know what the big finisher is for them. Okay. Didn't expect to see that. Okay, they get to draw if they want. Gain three and go to seven. So if they have a way to bounce our thing that does keep them alive, if they have bounce, like we counter, let's go. That was a fun game. This is slow, but we're going to keep it. We have our turn one slate of hand. Okay, actually, we'll go Delver instead. That was a good draw, I think. Let's see what we're up against. Okay, a little blue-green explore. Amazing. Okay, so this is good. This is a really good start here. We're going to keep Make Disappear available. Um... Sure, I think I'll let them crew. Okay, so we're gonna let them crew first. We're just not gonna let them attack. We're gonna bounce. And then scry. 
So, do we want another Delver? I really want to try to hit a Talarian Terror. I guess next turn, what do we do? We play Slate of Hand, hit a land. Yeah, we're not playing Delver next turn anyway, I don't think. Okay, let's go Slate of Hand, try to hit a land. Good. Hit them for three. And again, we will counter anything. Essence Scatter for creature spells, make disappear. Yeah, we'll just make disappear that. Good enough. They can hit us for three. We really want to hit a Talarian Terror here soon. Let's try to hit. Let's try to hit one. Okay. That's good. And do we leave up Essence Scatter? I think we leave up Essence Scatter instead of playing the second Delver. Yeah, I mean, good enough. Plus, we're filling our graveyard for Talarian Terror. They may be stuck on land here as well. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, Haywire Knight, what does that do? Nope. Destroying artifacts. So, we could play Flow, uh, excuse me, we could play Thirst and drop the Talarian Terror. Feels pretty good. They're gonna have a hard time getting through the Terror, I think. So we'll hit them for three. Let's Thirst for Discovery. I was going to say, we actually did want to hit a land there because we get to play the land and then play Terror for one mana. They can grow the Wormlet to potentially have a block if they control three or more artifacts. So if they play one more artifact, they'll give it Death Touch. Okay, Surge Engine. They get Death Touch. That's interesting. I probably will block... Hmm. Let's just hit for three in the air. We'll keep the terror back. Make them put mana into... Make them put mana into that surge engine if they want to get it through. And if they grow the wormlet, we will block it. Interesting. Take five here. Yeah, so we're gonna trade with this. Come on. Oh, nice. Right, we're getting a little lucky here. Do we draw a million cards? Let's play our land first, and then draw a bunch of cards, and just hope we can hit a terror. Hmm, not so lucky. So next turn, we're gonna take two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeesh. Okay, so we would die, so we have to keep one back to... Hmm. Alright, so let's pass with Spell Pierce up and see what happens. They present a lot of damage here, so we need to be able to block. Because they could activate Tough Cookie for lethal. Okay. Seven. Do we take seven? I think we're going to block the Tough Cookie, actually. That deals us five, we go to six. We really need to hit... Really need to hit another Talarian Terror. It's unfortunate that we didn't get another one yet. But we're seeing some more cards. Hmm. Okay. We wanted to get that activated ability off the battlefield, since they can turn their food into attackers. I think that might be the thing that gets us. Come on, Terror. Okay. Um, we're going to draw a million cards again. We really need to hit a good blocker here. Wow, man. Just literally not in the cards. Let's see if we can have one more shot at it. Nope. Not going to happen, so we're dead. They turn on one, it's a 4-4. If we block the 4-4, we're dead to everything else. So yeah, that's the game. Yep, we're going to keep. We would prefer to have turn one Delver, but starting with Slate of Hand is not bad. Alright, so we'll go Slate of Hand. Yep, we'll put that into our hand. Next turn we can play Delver, keep up Spell Pierce. And hopefully we'll get to use these. Nice, okay. 
Excellent. Good start here. So we can't tap out. We miss a land drop there. But I didn't want to tap out for Moan of Truth and have this thing get burned in response. And we'll see what we're up against. Okay. I think that's good enough to counter. And this should give us just such a massive tempo advantage at this point. Okay, we need to hit a we need to hit a land now. One into your graveyard. So we need to be able to keep the uh, spell pierce or fading hope available. We'll spell pierce anything we can. Bounce a creature. Amazing. Okay, we're in a very good spot right now. Let's hit them for three more. I think we play Terror and keep Spell Pierce up again. Oh, yep, we got another one. That should be it. Okay, not scooping yet. Proud of them. Okay, and we might as well play this. We don't want to miss a trigger. They could have a uh, board white that deals damage to multiple creatures, but it probably also can't get the terror. So we have two lethal threats, potentially three, and we'll see if they have an answer. Or if they're gonna be sad and make us wait. All right, all right, scoop it up, you lost. Let's flip this one too, huh? Boop, 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 boop. So you guys are lucky. I had this all out for you. So you just get to see their head explode. Yep, and we get the reveal. Good game. First is Copper Coat Vanguard, a two mana 2-2 two -two that gives our other humans plus one plus O oh, and Ward 1, and Yoshin Tactician that gives our other soldiers plus one plus one. So of course, we're playing tons of other cheap human soldiers to try and get our opponents dead as quickly as possible. But there's more to it than that. A bunch of our creatures have flash, like Cathar Commando, Zephyr Sentinel, and Resolute Reinforcements. They're all two drops, so we can pass with our mana up for counter spells like Make Disappear and Protect the Negotiators. Our one drops include four each of Yoshin Frontliner and Recruitment Officer, and to round out the deck, we're playing two copies of Gavany Dawnguard that lets us draw extra cheap threats, and a few copies of Fading Hope to get some blockers out of our way. Lastly, we're only playing 22 lands, four of which are the Secluded Courtyard which taps for white or blue, as long as we're using it to cast a soldier. So, that's the deck. Let's jump into the games. This looks good. We get to start on Recruitment Officer. Turn two, we'll pass with Counterspell and Reinforcements up. And see what we're up against. We may actually want to just go resolve the Vanguard. Uh, it also puts Ward on these other creatures, so it's going to make them a little harder to interact with. And then if we get to drop reinforcements, we'd be in a pretty good spot here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, nice curve out here. Hopefully we get to go reinforcements on their end step. Counterspell is fine. Sure. Did them for Ooh, this is interesting. Yeah, we're just gonna resolve another one. Because now that they can't counter this. Yeah. Ooh. Nice curve out there. Copper Coat Vanguard is fantastic. I like this hand. I'm gonna go for the untapped land. Because if we draw another untapped land, we'll be happy we did it this way. And if we draw a tap land. Yeah, this is fine. What do I do here? This isn't gonna work out great. We're just gonna play the tap land, play this, pass the turn. See what we're up against here. Blue white. Okay, spyglass siren. Exploring. If they get a counter on that, okay, that's good. Now we at least get to attack into them here. So we get to... They pump each other, so they're two twos. Get them for four, past the turn. 
We would rather play protect the negotiators so we can counter something unless they pay three. So hopefully they tap out. Like they probably play Zoetic Glyph. Oh, that's great. We would love to counter that. Okay, what are they gonna do? Attacking with both. Cool. Let's play this so we can make disappear and resolute reinforcements. Go ahead and attack. Target this and this. They can eat the one, which is fine if they want to do that. Yeah, they're afraid to block, so I like that. Down to nine. We would love to draw Yoshin Tactician. Is probably our best draw at this point in the game. Make this appear that. Nice. That worked out well. I think we're supposed to mulligan this. But we have some turns to draw our white. So it's a risky keep. But we pass on turn two with Make Disappear available. We have two turns to draw our white source. See what our opponent's doing. Restless Vents. So pay three to make it a two three. Maybe a play with fire here to exile. That's interesting. Just pass. Hopefully we draw some white. That's good enough. Good enough to counter. White. Nice. Okay, so we get to go soldier. We pass the turn. Maybe they'll play around our counter spell. And we'll play the reinforcements. Because we might follow it up with Yoshin Tactician. Oh, I should have um, bounced that then, but this is going to work out fine. So we're going to do this. We're going to bounce Scry looking for a land. Um, let's not get greedy. We'll keep that on top. We'd have loved it to be a white source, but we really need to attack here. Hopefully, no, probably no, no single mana removal for the Tactician. But it might die on our next turn. Putting down the reinforcements. Okay, so they get to play the Appraiser. Trying to hit something good here. Let's see what they get. Yep, they got something good. And they get to exile our Frontliner. Okay. So here, this is unfortunate, can't attack through the Trespasser. We really don't want to lose our, um, I forgot that thing's going to flip. We should have played one on our turn. That was a misplay on my part. I should have cast a spell. Okay, so exiling some stuff from our graveyard. And we'll... Let this happen. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Okay. Splash some stuff in. Yeah, I should have played that on our turn and kept the other one up. Alright. Blooding out here. Got a mulligan. But we'll keep this and we'll put back we'll put back the dawn guard because there's no guarantee we're going to be able to cast that okay we'll say soldier recruitment officer Let's see what our opponent's on here blue green so they're probably playing that reanimator deck we'll sultai reanimator yep Okay, and they put some stuff in their graveyard. No reanimation targets yet, so that's good. Um, let's just resolve the commando now. There's no reason to do it on their turn and let them potentially counter it. They're going to mill some cards. Okay, no reanimation target yet. That's good. Passing to us. Let's try to resolve this vanguard. Nice. Okay, so we're going to put some pressure on them. 
opponent to nine. Oh, I was supposed to cast this second main. That was a misplay on my part. I'm gonna regret that. So seven, eight, nine. Well, if they don't reanimate here or wipe our board, which I don't even know if their deck is capable of doing, the Ocean Tactician still gets us the game. But we were supposed to, uh, they have the squirming emergence? I don't think so. Squirming emergence lets them hit, oh, and they don't have the, um, okay, they get the Titan of Industry back, maybe gain life and make a 4-4? Yep, okay. So here, we can't attack through all of this stuff, right? Oh, this thing has reach anyway. What am I saying? Um, that's interesting. If we attack with everything, what happens? We can enable an attack with the Cathar Commando next turn. If we attack all, two things get through. Let's play some stuff. Pass the turn, and then we'll attack all next turn. Their life total is just a little bit too high. Okay, hopefully they can't... They get to bring back the, um... Ooh, yikes. Uh-oh. No counter spells either. So they are free to do whatever they want. Firming Emergence for Atroxa. Let's see what we draw, though. Because we may end up drawing our way out of this. This is definitely scary. Okay. Okay, they're at 11. Slash in. Ooh, Fading Hope. So if we bounce and attack all, we might get them. Okay. Let's spread it around. <laughs> Do we get them? I think we got them. Block the five and you take seven, 11. Let's go! Scoop it up. Nice. Wow, what a top deck. Good game. Inspired by powerful build around, the Illuminator Virtuoso. It's a two mana 1-1 one, one double strike that whenever you target it with a spell, it connives, which means you draw a card, then discard a card. And if you discard a non-land card, it picks up a plus one plus one counter. So of course we're playing lots of ways to target it and grow it to be absolutely massive, like Homestead Courage, which is two spells in one since it has flashback, Ancestral Anger, and Monstrous Rage, which the latter of the two also give trample. We also have two copies of Flare of Faith, which can also give our humans indestructible. But even without the Virtuoso, the deck can operate just fine as an aggressive beatdown deck, with one drops like four each of Embereth Veteran, Monastery Swift Spear, and Recruitment Officer. We also have four Copper Coat Vanguard that gives every creature in our deck, since they're all humans, plus one plus oh and ward one. And finally, we have four copies of Imidane's Recruiter as a surprise team pump. So that's the deck, let's jump into the games. Uh, definitely gonna keep this. This hand looks good. Um, we're gonna start on the tap land. We're not playing a spell turn one anyway. We'll go turn two, Vanguard. Let's see, what we're up against that. Okay. All right, Vanguard. Hopefully this survives. Next turn we get to go Vanguard and Swift Spear. Should be a nice little one-two punch. Gonna be main life. This explores. Okay. Um, we're gonna go for the. Kind of puts them under some pressure, though. Hmm. Three, two. I'm just gonna attack with both. Let them trade with one of these if they want to. All right, no trade. So I think that's actually better for us. And let's see what they play here. They can go off with this thing. All right, so they're gonna look at our hand. That's interesting. I'd probably take the Ancestral Anger if I were them. Okay, they're gonna prevent us from doing our thing. So they want that to be a 3-3, three, three, right? Okay. So, play our land. We'll play Ancestral Anger on the, I think on the Swift Spear. We want to give this trample. It's going to be the biggest thing we have. Veteran. 
Might put a roll token onto the Copper Coat Vanguard. That way they can't single block it. Um, am I okay with a trade here? I don't think so. I'd want them to double block to have to get the trade. They have to double block if they want to get a trade here. Okay, so we got them down to five. We're looking good. We're in a good position. We really need to draw some of our tricks here. We've been drawing a lot of creatures. Hopefully we can wrap this game up here soon. Okay, Shouldred. Good way to lock us down. Let's see. So, Amalia is now a 3-3. Alright, so we lose two life, which is fine. This is... If his toughness is three or less, put a counter on it. So this would be a 5-4 with Trample. And then a... Yeah, so we're going to put it here. Unfortunately... Hmm... Let's see, veteran, we're gonna die anyway, right? So if we attack all, I think, I think we have it. I'm not sure, I think we have it. <laughs> so then we're gonna put it here. And then we'll attack with everything. And I think we got them. Cause they block, block, they die. They block, block, they die. Cause they take two, f six. Excellent. Close one. They almost stabilized there. Yeah, I mean, we want a one drop, but this is not a bad start. We'll go turn to probably Virtuoso. Skrill. Okay. Land pass. This is a good hand with all these Homestead Courage. If we can make sure that the uh, Virtuoso doesn't die. Interesting, no attack there. I think we want to actually go for the... Yeah, I want to try and start doing as much damage as we can. So we risk having this die to removal here. But I'm not sure we're able to protect it anyway. Okay, we take this. Okay, they're deciding if they want that in their hand or their graveyard. They're leaving it on top, no blocks. Okay, that was a good draw, because we get to go, we go Vanguard, just Homestead Courage once, discard another Homestead Courage. Or do we discard a land? Oh yeah, we definitely discard a Courage, we just have so many. So we get to put an extra counter on it this way, and now they can't block us profitably here. And again, hopefully we dodge removal. The Vigilance is really nice as well, because if they don't have removal, we keep them off an attack. So let's see. Um, if they have a fight spell, like in green, white has some removal, but they might have to use their whole turn. And the Vanguard definitely helps us here. We would love to draw one of our Trample tricks. Okay, so they're getting two. Put a counter. Hexproof from that color. That doesn't work. Hexproof is not... Um, can I not? What? Oh, it can't be blocked by creatures of that color. Okay, there was one more piece of text on there. Got it. Alright, so here, we're just gonna try and... Let's try and hit another white. Because I really want to... Mm, let's discard the tap land. Um, let's do this one more time. Let's discard the other Virtuoso. We really want to draw a Trample trick because we might be able to just straight up kill them. Let's discard Homestead Courage. We'll play our white, we'll play Homestead Courage, and we're just trying to hit... Let's go! Let's discard this. I think that's the game. Because we get to go Trample... Double strike, bash you for a million. So that's 20 double strike and coming in. They can block five of it, and then they die to the rest. Whew, that was close. This looks like a good hand to me. 
I'm going to start with Recruitment Officer. Next turn, we can go Untapped Land, Embreath Veteran, Homestead Courage. Let's see what our opponent's playing here. Mono, okay. So playing against Mono Red, we can go pretty fast as well, as you saw in that last game. So we'll just go ahead and do this now. Hit them for three. This gives us a block on a Swift Spear. Actually, we probably wouldn't block there. A 4-3 bricks them pretty well, though. Oh, red-green. The scamp. Okay. Um, Flare of Faith is pretty good. Doesn't give Trample. Flare of Faith plus Monstrous Rage is pretty good. They're going to get to trade with one of them. I guess we can go, like, yeah, we just attack with both. So we go Monstrous Rage. All right, so we're going to Monstrous Rage, and then we'll Flare of Faith. That work out okay. Hmm, let's see. So that's plus three, plus three. Okay, ours is a six, three. This gives plus two, plus two, and Indestructible. And then they can kill our Embereth Veteran or deal us five damage. I guess we would be okay with either one. But this way they're taking a ton of damage. Yeah, that's fine. That that works out, because we're left with our 4-3. We can hit it with a Homestead Courage again, keep the pressure up. Let's see what their turn three play is. Swift Spear, okay. You really need to draw another threat. Hopefully no fight spells. Okay. It's pretty good. I want to deal a six and take five back. Maybe more. Okay, let's see what we draw. Ooh. Okay. Um, we're a little short. We're looking good to kill them next turn. And hopefully no removal. Opponent to three. 14. Uh, it's definitely possible they could uh, get us with something crazy here. But 14 feels pretty safe to me. Famous last words. If they have removal for the recruitment officer, we might be in some trouble. They could fight and, like, two for one themselves with the swift spear. Okay. They don't know we have a monstrous rage coming. Okay. Okay. So 5 4, trample, 7 4. No, it doesn't get another plus one, plus one. Yeah, so it'd be a seven, four. They would take one damage. They'd have to, they would have to double block. I think it's a good attack. Because we also get to just activate the recruitment officer here to get some more threats. And if they block poorly. Okay. All right, so seven, six. They're going to block with the swift spear. Alright, so we have to Monstrous Rage to get that thing off the battlefield and activate the ability. So we're just going to do this. We'll activate the ability before damage. Yep, we'll grab this guy. They do take a little bit of damage. They go to one. But we're going to be under some pressure now. Monstrous Rage, are, they, are we dead? Almost. 10-7, and then this thing is going to kill us next turn. Let's see. Let's see. So they need a way to pump it to give it double strike. Miss. 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 It's not a guarantee we're going to win if they pass, but... Alright, so I think they got us now. Because if we block and then block... They get to deal us three. If we block like this, that's one, two. Either either way, it's two damage, so. All right, you got us. Close one. Very, very close. Okay, this looks nice. Turn one recruitment officer. We really want to draw an untapped land so that we can play Copper Coat Vanguard on curve. Let's see, Kumano. Good draw there. So we get to play our Coppercoat Vanguard. 
You get to fight against removal a little bit with the ward. Uh, next turn we can bash with the Ancestral Angers. Okay, so let's draw first and see what we hit. Okay, that's a good draw. I'm not sure. Next turn, yeah, next turn we get to double spell. So I'm just going to go like this and hit them for four. Because then next turn we get to play both of our red spells and the tap lane if we don't draw something better. Opponent wants to race. That's bold. Okay, so let's do this. We'll go Ancestral Anger. Let's see, that's four, five, six, seven, wait, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, we're close. Um, we're not going to kill them, though. So let's hit them for six. Play the Virtuoso, pass. If they leave the Virtuoso alive, they are dead. I think if they leave anything alive, they are dead. So unless they can literally kill us right now, I think we're okay. We're going to take this. On the off chance that they have a trick to kill the Virtuoso, we do not want that to happen. So we go to seven. We go to six. We kill them with the Virtuoso. And then we go, we can actually do this as well. We can, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and if you made it this far, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing for future budget decks just like this one. We'll see you next time.